Hey everyone, welcome back. And yes, I am finally in a hotel. I uh, had a great trip this past weekend as well, where I was in a rustic cabin. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, in this episode of The Traveling Shaver. So first off, the products that I'll be using this evening. I'm going to start off with the mentholated tube from Phoenix Stars and Accoutrements. The soap. Uh, I am participating in uh, my good friend Josh Morris over at Redbeard Shaves. Uh, he's doing a One Artisan October, and I am going to be using WSP. WSP, uh, they're kind of tied with another artisan as the most I have in my den, as far as full containers are concerned. Um, so I decided I was going to go with WSP this month, and I used uh, lavender wood last night when I actually filmed my the first attempt at this video. And technical difficulties, video was too long um, for the app that I was using to try to upload that to uh, to YouTube, and it didn't quite work. So I had to, <laughs> I'm reshooting it tonight. But tonight I'll be using Blackbeard, which is one of my one of my favorites from WSP. Uh, this is in the Rustic Formula, phenomenal, phenomenal soap. Uh, the brush, since I am on the road, as you all have probably seen this quite often, is my Craving Shaving Chop Chop Travel Brush with a 26 mil Duro Knot. Uh, leather has been whipped up in my Vanillet uh, resin bowl, uh, travel bowl there, and I'll be using the Dovo Chevet with the green insert and Persona hair shaper blades. So these Persona hair shaper blades are very similar um, in make to the gem style. Uh, blades as well that you have like in the Starling. These are both made by Persona. They both have spines. You can just imagine this as an elongated gem style blade. Uh, this will be my first shave with this blade here, so we'll see how it goes. I predict a little bit of blood. Uh, potentially right in here you can see there's a little bit of spots of irritation. Where I was at this past weekend, um, didn't have the best water. And I tried shaving and I shaved with the uh, I should have the one time I was able to shave down there. So in this episode, uh, I will be highlighting not really a city or a town, but more of a destination uh, where I was. And that destination is Horse Pins 40, which is right outside of Steele, Alabama, in the foothills of Alapalapa of the Appalachian, Appalachian, I can never say that word right, mountains. Beautiful little area. Uh, it is privately owned nature preserve slash bouldering area. And the family that owns it is the Schultz family. Uh, and they have some pretty strict rules uh, as far as, I mean, they are very big into the leave no trace. Uh, because it is a privately held nature preserve, there's a bunch of endangered species on the property. It's uh, 40 acres. You can do some rustic camping on there, uh, which is what I did. I stayed in uh, one of their cabins right by the pavilion. They are one of the headquarters of bouldering in the south. And they are also home of the Bluegrass Fest, a couple of Bluegrass Festivals. Uh, they have a natural amphitheater where they hold Bluegrass concerts. Uh, some Bluegrass greats like Charlie Daniels have performed there. It is also home to the, some Native American burial grounds. So it is steeped in history. Uh, also during the Civil War, the Confederate Army would um, use horse pens 40 to hide horses from the Union Army, partially how the, uh, the location got its name. And the cabins, when I say rustic camping, I mean rustic camping. They are log cabins that the family that owns the place built. And there are two bunk beds, one, the both on the bottom bunk is um, a queen mattress. The top is a twin. And it's wide enough that there is a small heating unit that they use to heat. There's a window air conditioning unit. 
and there is uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> it's um, very very basic. Mattresses were not uncomfortable. They weren't the best, of course, but they weren't bad. So if you do want to go there, uh, definitely be sure to bring your own bedding. Or not, yeah, bring your own, like, sheets and pillows and whatnot, they don't have that there. The, uh, the restrooms, they have a bench in the center. There are, at least in the men's, there are two uh, shower stalls. They're very small, kind of like RV size shower stalls. The sink is pretty much, there's no counter space on the sink. There's the, uh, a wooden shelf above that you can put your toothbrush on and whatnot. I was only able to get one shave in there while I was there. Most of us are having too much fun. I was just having a lot of fun while I was there and uh, staying up way too late and getting up way too early. And no, I was not there for the bouldering. And because of the event in which I partook, I'm going to talk about mostly, mostly talk about the event uh, and why I was in or I was at Horse Pens 40, uh, not necessarily the history of Horse Pens 40 or anything else. However, there is a link in the description below to Horse Pens, um, so you can kind of get that if you're interested in, in the area. Uh, you can look at their website; it is a very decent website as well. Uh, the reason that I was there is I actually flew in to Atlanta. A good friend of mine picked me up from the airport and we stayed at his house on Wednesday evening. And then we woke up Thursday and left his house about 6.30 in the morning to drive to Alabama. Now the closest airport is, um, I just had it, it'll come back to me. Uh, shoot, what is it? Birmingham. Closest airport is Birmingham, which is about mm, an hour away from Horse Pens 40. Not because of distance, but because the roads getting there are just kind of windy and not really conducive to going at speeds. Um, but my friend and I were there. We arrived Thursday uh, morning to assist in setting up for... Wow, these bays are smooth. A slingshot tournament. Let me say that again for those of you that don't believe me. I was there to participate in a slingshot tournament. Now I know what most of you are thinking when you think of slingshots. Uh, you think of the wrist rockets you can find at um, places like Dick's Sporting Goods and Walmart and, and those kind of areas. That's not it. Uh, I'm talking about some very nice high-end custom-made slingshots that cost Sometimes a couple hundred dollars each. In fact, now those of you that know me decently, uh, have interacted with me for a while on Facebook or whatever, I know that I am, I've been shooting scene shots for about seven years by now. And my, this is actually my second channel. My first channel is a slingshot channel. I did reviews and a lot of stuff on there. Uh, there will be a link for those of you that are interested in slingshots or if you're curious after this video to go check it out. There's a link in the description below as well uh, to my original channel. A yeah, little bit of blood. I had some right there yesterday when I used my uh, Starling. I kind of predicted that. So the event, uh, this is the third year that it was held at Horse Pens 40. And it is organized by my good friend, Dan Obrosius, who lives in Steele. And there are multiple events for the tournament as well. Uh, there is a 10 meter or 33 feet knockdown. Um, you shoot, there's various sizes of targets. And they were uh, you'd have to do that twice. P target point values were, I just if I remember this correctly, uh, two 
four, six, I believe an eight and a 10. And there were two sets of those and then some small, uh, and the 10 point target is about an inch, inch and a half diameter circle. Pretty small shooting from, uh, from 33 feet. And then there was clays underneath that, the little uh, daisy small blast clay targets. And you had to shoot all of the knockdowns if we could shoot the uh, the clay targets. And you only had, I think, 20 rounds, um, something like that. There's a 20 meter shoot, or um, roughly 66 feet. Where you had to shoot, uh, you only got 10 shots to hit 10 trap clay targets. And only the highest person, or the highest score on that was nine out of 10. Someone got eight out of 10, and uh, someone else got seven out of 10. Those were the top three. Uh, nobody skunked the, that event. So everybody at least got one of them. There is a variable distance clay target shoot where the trap clays were set on uh, wire holders at variable distances in the field. And you had to shoot those. Uh, the scoring on that one was mm, a little interesting in that you had to shoot, you only had, I think, 20 rounds to hit 10 targets. If you hit all 10 targets, uh, if there's a tie, who did it in the least amount of shots? If that was a tie, whoever did it fastest. So that was one of the events as well. And then after that, uh, well, not after that, you could do these events in the order you wanted. Uh, there was a fields course, which uh, had 40 targets. Two shots per target you could take. For, if you hit it on the first shot, you got five points. Hit it on the second shot, you got three points. And after that, it was moot. You know, you couldn't get any points for that. The Woods course had some various interesting targets, shall I say. Now, one of them was one of the banes of my existences during that part of the tournament was uh, what looked like a raptor being abducted by a UFO. And the target itself had this huge spot in the center that was wide open. And you had to hit the target itself, the actual metal frame of the target, not the dead space between it. So you had the UFO, two of those lines going down, and then the raptor on the little platform. Both times I shot at that bloody target, it went right through the center. So I got zero points. Uh, the woods course took about two hours to complete, and I was an idiot and did that very first on uh, Friday when the competition opened. So, and the reason I said I was an idiot and did it first is, uh, is I've been having back issues. And <laughs> two hours in the woods, walking and shooting a slingshot at various targets and kind of, kind of, contorting your body to, so you can get a clear sight in some of these targets was not the wisest idea. Um, so after two hours, after a little bit, uh, I think after 18 or so targets in, my back was starting to hurt. After about 28 targets in, I was just kind of done. My back was killing me. Uh, but I was with some really good friends. Didn't want to force them to stop uh, doing their stuff so i just i continued on uh finished did shot all 40 targets or shot at all 40 targets i should say i hit just over half um and went to back to my little cabin and had to lie down for like an hour and a half it was just it was bad and because of that i woke up the next day you know after about an hour and a half i got out of my cabin and 
Went and talked to some, you know, hung out with some friends and some more plinking on the practice range and and everything. And I was still in a decent amount of pain. Um, but I, I figured, you know, I'm going to go out and be social. I'm here. I flew in to Atlanta. My buddy picked me up and we drove there. Like, I'm here. I'm going to go hang out. And definitely glad I did. Had a great time doing that. But I woke up the next morning and I was still in a significant amount of pain um, to the point where I knew there's no way I could stand for the period of time to do the events in the competition. Uh, so regretfully, I had to withdraw. So yes, I did withdraw from the tournament from actual score, but I um, I still shot, I still hung out with the, a lot of my good friends that were there, and it was it was really good to see some friends I haven't seen since uh, 2016, the last time I went to a tournament, and meet some people in person that I've known and talked to for years uh, because of forums and Facebook groups. And it was just really good to uh, to see those people and, and hang out and just shoot and have fun. Um, that, for me, was the highlight of the weekend. Just hanging out and basically just goofing off. Uh, and I'm not a super serious competitor anyway. Uh, the people that won the tournament, or the, the gentleman that won, was one of the hosts. Uh, the organizer that lives in the area. He took first place. Uh, his best friend. Uh, who was from Kansas, took second place, and there was only one shot that separated those two. The point values were just exceptionally close. Uh, and then there was like a two-shot value between second place and third place, and between third and fourth was a one-target miss. I was super close. Uh, the gentleman took second is someone I've known for years. The gentleman that took third is a newbie on the scene. Uh, he's been shooting for less than a year, or about a year now. Phenomenal shooter, really good guy. Really enjoyed getting to know him this weekend. My uh, really good friend in St. Louis took fourth. And that was just super close, one shot between the two. And, uh, I just had, had a blast. Good friend of mine from Tennessee came down, a gentleman I've talked to for years, about six years at this point. Gotten to know him pretty dang well. He came with his wife and another friend of his, uh, and he and I, <laughs> we, we both got some brand new frames that week in the same frame, this production model, and we shot that, went down the practice range. Just he and I were shooting down there for half an hour, 45 minutes. We we're just giving each other crap, shooting slingshots, just having a blast. And that was one of my favorite parts of that entire weekend. There are a lot of very interesting targets at the event as well. Uh, my friend that picked me up in the airport, or from the airport, and uh, took me there. He brought some awesome, awesome targets. I think everyone's favorite target was an aluminum heart that he cut out and then drilled a hole that was just big enough to hold a 22 millimeter blank. And by blank, I mean if you hit it just right, if you hit it like dead center, it went off. It, made a little bang like it was shot from a firearm. And that was being shot from not quite 33 feet, probably about seven meters, which is about 
23 feet, 24 feet, something like that, if I remember correctly. And it was a challenging target. Um, I am happy to report that I hit it. I made it go bang. It was a challenging enough target that anytime anyone hit it and you heard a bang, and you're either up at the pavilion where the main knockdowns were taking place, or if you were close by, everyone just kind of screamed in congratulations and joy for the person that hit it. And of course, the person that hit it screamed in joy as well. I'm happy to report that I hit that. Um, oddly enough, on Friday, after the woods course, and I hit it with my tournament friend that I picked up, that my friend, uh, you know, the Atlanta area made, and I got it at the airport. Never shot it before. But I've shot frames that had very similar gaps and everything else to it, so it wasn't completely new to me. If you're gonna do slingshots and you're going to go to tournaments, <laughs> don't do what I did the last two that I went to. I shot a brand new frame to me, uh, kind of a semi-new cut on the uh, latex, and I did okay. Um, but if you're gonna go to tournament, pick a single slingshot. The type of latex you're going to use, the, the width you're going to use, whether that be a straight cut or tapered, uh, and just use that and choose your pouch or the leather or merco fiber material that's going to hold your pouch or hold your ammo. Be consistent. Don't be like me. <laughs> it was it was it wasn't bad, but I could have been smarter. But I still had a blast. I wouldn't uh, have changed anything except for my back hurting. That's my only regret, is I wasn't able to finish the competition due to um, my back injury. But, you know, it is what it is. But it's still a lot of fun. Hanging out with good friends, good food. Really good food was uh, there. One of the guys that got took in took third as a part-time chef. He brought some filet. Took that on the grill on the Saturday night for those that are still around. See, there was some filet, some gourmet burgers. I'm trying to give everything that everyone had. I brought some squirrel, there was sausage, just oh, all kinds of good food. Yes, for those, of you do, for those of you that don't know, people do hunt squirrel in some states. It's illegal where I live. And you can shoot uh, squirrels with slingshots. Sometimes they have a slingshot season. Slingshot hunting is legal in my state, so. If you do artists in that, you can just hunt with a slingshot in some places. Oh, got myself right there. Yeah, this plate is definitely thicker than the dobos. Different feel to it that I'm that I've been using on this for a little bit. And it's different. There we go. Different enough is like, even though I've been using this razor for a while, it's different enough that I have to get used to the blade and the, the slight difference in angle. Just cut myself again. It's also challenging because I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't see very well. 
this is a longer video, I apologize for that. So as I mentioned earlier, I tried to film this video twice, or once before, last night. I tried inserting uh, pictures from the tournament into this video. And the app that I was using said that I could only have so long to upload to uh, YouTube. And it wasn't letting me. So, if you want to see pictures of from the event, um, the slingshot that I used, anything like that, go over to my other channel. I'll be putting a video on the tournament on that page. Or onto, that, onto uh, my slingshot channel. As well as links to the individuals and other channels and shops and everything else that it, for products that I use and people who uh, whose slingshots that I use. But this is a shaving channel, so I'm not going to get all that there. Uh, at least all that in this video here. Uh, this is the hard part. My hair is stupid. Not sure if you can hear that feedback. sure if you can see that, but a decent amount of stubble in there. So not bad, not BBS by any means, but not bad. But at least for me with the straight razor, because the way my hair grows, I can't get BBS. But all I can hope for is a DFS. And this is definitely a DFS. We'll just do a little I should do this on the first pass, but Tobacco, vanilla, and cherries are the top notes. I can definitely get it. I think there's a little patchouli in there as well. But it's just a small hint of patchouli. So it's very pleasant. I thoroughly enjoy it. Thoroughly enjoy this scent. So I got some decent stubble. One day I'll get better with this. One day. Still can't complain. I've only been using this less than a month. spot. There. So 
little bit of weepers. Not bad. Can't complain. Awesome, awesome shave. Wonderful scent. Wonderful soap. I'm not gonna bother any touch-ups with the uh, the starling tonight. I think I leave it as is. This is a long video, I apologize for that. This is a lot longer than normal. Um, but I also did a three pass with the with my Dovo. So if you're still here, thank you for that. If you're not still here, sorry you sorry you took off early. Also, thank you very much to all my new subscribers. I've seen I've gotten a couple. I do be appreciate it. I should start doing this at the beginning of my videos for those that only watch the you know the first five or so minutes and then bail. I should probably do it this way. So I'm gonna call that good. Definitely socially acceptable. This video is long enough, so I'll clean up off camera. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Again, just a quick recap. I used the Dovo with the green insert and the uh, Persona hair shaper blades. This insert is thicker due to the spine on the hair shapers. The soap I used this evening, starting, starting off my one vendor October, is WSP's Blackbeard. I'm not starting off, you know, second shade in. Uh, the soap this evening, or the brush, excuse me, is my Craving Shaving Chop Shop Traveler with the Twin Six Mode. There or not, soap was whipped up in my Vanule Travel Bowl. This one's made out of resin. And I want to thank you guys again for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next episode.